Hi, and welcome to Scrap and Rabbit. In this video, I'm going to show you how to take a regular three-ring binder that's covered in vinyl and turn it into the covers for a mini album. Actually, this is one of my not-so-mini albums. It's a recipe album that I made just recently, and I used a three-inch binder to make the covers. So I'm going to show you step-by-step step how I took the binder apart, removed the vinyl, and then reassembled the album, the uh, the covers, and wrapped them with this gorgeous scrapbook paper. I bought this binder to insert my pages into. It's a three ring binder. It's supposed to be a three inch binder. That's what it said on on the label. Now three inch binders, these are the the slanted D rings. And for a true three inch binder, the straight portion of the D ring should be three inches. So that's how you measure these slanted rings. It's hard to do on camera. Now, so if I measure my straight portion of the D ring, it's actually more like two and a half inches, so I don't think this is a true three inch binder. I did see some three inch binders at the store that were longer, but it was attached to a, um, a plastic cover and I didn't want to use that because I want to remove the vinyl from this album and just reveal the chipboard and then I'm going to cover the chipboard. But so I'm going to work with this binder, which I think is actually a two and a half inch one. And I think my pages will still fit in. They'll be a bit snug, but they should they should still fit. So now to take this apart, all I have to do is cut along the very edge, and I can just peel off this vinyl, and I'll be left with the covers. So I'm going to start with this end. This is the easiest end here. And also, what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to cut the end if it's rounded. My vinyl is rounded, but if my cardboard is also rounded, I'm going to just slice it down the end to make sure I have nice straight corners. So I just cut off the end here. And then once I've got a bit of it off, then it's going to be easier. That. I'll use my other scissors, they're a bit sharper. Now I've only done this once before, so I'm assuming they're all made the same. And it looks like this one has the vinyl stuck right to the cover. So it might be a bit more difficult to remove, but I don't want to try Mod Podging directly on the, uh, the vinyl because I'm not sure how, how well that's going to stick to my scrap paper. I think once I get this side off, it might be easier. So I'm being careful not to damage the chipboard. There we go.
there. So there's the front cover. Now if I had damaged the front cover, I can also use just some regular chipboard. Replace it with another piece of 12 by 12 chipboard or whatever size I need. Now I'm going to do the same thing for this side piece here. On the spine. So there's the spine piece. So that goes next to this piece like that. I might not use this because I might decide to make my spine a little bit wider so that I have a little bit more height to the album. I'm not sure because I, I think I might want to put a pocket here and some tags, so I'll need a little bit more height. So I'm not sure if I'm going to do that yet or not. Now this piece I want to be careful with because I need to use this. This is a piece that has my three ring attachment. So I'm definitely going to be using this piece of chipboard. Okay. Now I need to remove the plastic from underneath my rings. remove as much of the vinyl as possible. It's going to be covered anyways, so it's not a big deal if it's not all removed, but I want to make sure that my back cover is going to be as flat as possible. So I want to remove that vinyl as best I can. Here's the first little pin that's holding the paper. If I try and get my scissors on there, in there and I try to tear it away at the paper at the vinyl I was able to use these smaller scissors and slide them right underneath here and cut away and I was able to remove the uh, the vinyl that was stuck underneath here. It's still stuck on the ends but that's okay because it's going to be covered up when I wrap the album, when I wrap the covers. Now on the ends here I removed about half an inch because the, the ends were rounded and I didn't want that so I removed half an inch on the, the top and the bottom cover. I'm just not sure that measure the same and they do. And also I made myself another spine out of chipboard and it's about a quarter inch wider than the original spine that came with the album because I decided I do want to have a little bit of extra height to the album. So I'm going to put this aside and use it for another album. Now to attach my, my covers I'm going to put a piece of plastic underneath and it's going to attach all three pieces together. So I'm going to have my spine on this plastic and then I'm going to attach my cover on either side like that. 
application. What I like to use is I have some page protectors that was like that and I just cut a, a strip off and I'm going to use this piece of plastic and my tape sticks to that very well. So I start by putting some two-sided tape on the back of my spine and then I'm going to remove that And I'm going to lay the spine right on my piece of plastic, right in the middle. Okay, so I want this to be straight. I'm just going to move this for now. Now my piece is 11 inches high and it's just a little bit shorter than my chipboard but that's okay. Like that. On either side here, on both sides, I'm going to put some more two-sided tape to attach the front and the back covers. And I'm going to leave about one-eighth to a quarter of an inch between the spine and the cover. So I'm going to put my tape about a quarter inch away from the edge of the spine. And I do the same thing on the other side, between one eighth to a quarter inch away from the spine, and I start taping. going to attach like that. I'm going to start by removing a piece of two-sided tape backing that's the furthest away from the spine. And I can position my cover. Now you want to make sure your cover is straight. If you tape it on crooked, the album is going to be crooked. And then just press over the area where you can move the tape back in. Make sure it's nice and straight. Then I can lift this up and remove the rest of the tape backing.
Okay, so my front cover is attached. Now I'm also going to be wrapping paper around here so it's going to help solidify the whole thing. It's not just going to be this tape that's holding it together. So now I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to attach the back cover like that. So I'll remove a piece of the tape backing. down nice and straight. off the rest of the tape backing. So now my covers are reattached. And I'm ready to start wrapping it. I'm going to wrap the covers with this blue paper. So I need to measure how much I need. Now this is just barely going to fit around the edges. I'm going to have a very, very thin lip to wrap over. So the middle of the spine here will be covered and my paper will overlap by about two and a half inches on each side of the front and the back cover. So I marked where my overlap is going to be. about here it's two and a half inches and the reason it's two and a half inches is because I'm going to want to solidify this area with this cardstock and it's going to fold underneath the binder rings like that and so it's going to start here and that's two and a half inches on this side so I want my spine cover to be even so it's going to be two and a half inches up to this side too so that means that for my front cover, I'm only going to need to wrap on the outside from here on out. So I don't need the entire sheet of paper. I'm going to measure, so from about a quarter inch past the line where my spine cover will extend, and I'm going to mark on the outside edge my paper. Now that's probably not in frame very well. So I just marked on the outside edge here that I need to wrap the cover. So I'm going to start with the front cover. I'm going to put some tape on here. I'll use my wider tape. So 
this is going to help hold my paper in place. And I'll put a strip on the edge. Here, if I work that, I'll tape this edge after. Okay, so I'm going to be about, I'm going to have about a quarter of an inch overhang. if I'm shaking the camera around. Okay, so I'm going to position this and I want it straight the first time. So like that, about a quarter inch all around for wrapping. Now remember the outside is the, the piece with the plastic on it, that's the outside of your album. Then I put some tape all around the edges of the paper. corners about an eighth of an inch away from the corner of the chipboard and that's going to help 
get a nice crisp fold. So just trim diagonally. You can draw a line first if you prefer. There, just like that. About one eighth of an inch away from the corner of the chipboard. Like that. Now I can use my bone folder to fold the paper up. and I can start wrapping the album. So I remove the tape backing from one corner from one corner here. And just pull that off and I wrap. I don't have much of a border, but just enough to Hold it in and then push in on the corner here like that to make it nice and square. And then wrap the other edge. Make sure that this is pushed in so you get a nice crisp corner. Do the other side. Same thing, push in on that corner. Like that. Now I'm going to have some paper on the inside. I'm not sure which paper yet, but that's going to go just right along the edges like that. So it's going to cover those edges of the paper all around. So do the same to the back cover. When I position my my wrapping paper under the back cover, I'm going to bring it in. I'm going to start about halfway in the the ring the ring section here because my spine cover will go from about here to here, and I want to make sure that it's all covered. So I'm going to start wrapping my my back cover about halfway through the ring and then the spine cover will overlap that part. So I've trimmed my corners and I've added my tape. I'm going to start holding the paper up. this end because I want to fold this underneath. I want to make sure it's folded underneath the um, 
the ring the ring base there. narrow tape. I ran out of my wider tape, so I also put a strip up on top of the chipboard. Okay, and let me start folding up. section and that's what's really going to make the album nice and solid. Okay. 